In this video, we're going to be talking about the ultimate powerhouse drone. Let's get into it. How's it going, folks? Mike with Drone Deer Recovery. For the guys that have been waiting for a while to hear me talk about the M4T, well, here it is. This is the absolute ultimate powerhouse of a drone. Yep, you heard me say it. I believe that this drone is as good as the M30T. You guys know that I've spoken highly about that drone, but this drone, what you're getting in this small package, it absolutely has blown my mind. Now, I've had my hands on this drone since December, but I didn't make a video on it right away. Did I want to? Absolutely. I was wanting to just get it out there and tell you how great this drone is, but I wasn't gonna do that until I used it. I had to do deer recoveries with it. I had to check the zoom. I I had to fly it in rain. I had to fly it in high winds. Dude, I even had to make sick, cool videos of our place here at Drone Deer Recovery in New Way Ag. And while doing that, I smacked the power line so the drone can take it. I'm telling you, it is actually insane what all is packed in this M4T. And I'm happy to say that I believe that this is going to be a very good drone for anybody that is wanting to get their hands on a thermal drone. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the case. And as you can see, it's a very small case. Everything that is in this case is in the Ultimate Drone Deer Recovery Kit that you can buy on the website. So all the chargers, everything, the light, is in this carry case. So let's go ahead and get it open. As you can tell, there's even room in here for other things. You could probably have your speaker mounted to your spotlight if you want it to have that on your drone. I only have a spotlight mounted to mine. As you can tell, I have my drone in the box, the spotlight mounted on the drone and we can easily close it. I'm gonna start pulling out everything that is in the Ultimate Drone Deer Recovery Kit. And again, this is all in here. I'm going to start with pulling out these charge cables and then the WB37 hub to charge your WB37 batteries that go in the back of your controller. There's one in here right now. So you get two batteries with that charge hub and you get a USB-C to C cable to charge this hub. I'm gonna plug that in, plug it into my battery generator. Love these battery generators. If you guys are looking for one, this thing is super convenient. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in these cables into the outlets and now get my 100 watt chargers plugged into here three 100 watt chargers in the ultimate kit. You need to have three to fly indefinitely. That way you can fly all day long, all night long. You can uh, able to do that easily. Since I'm here, I'm gonna talk about this battery hub. It has four slots for these flight batteries. You might think, well, why do I need three chargers? Well, it only charges one battery at a time. So if you have four batteries on here, it's going to charge this battery. Once that gets full, it'll go to the next battery. Once that's full, it'll go to the next battery. You need three of these so you can simultaneously be charging three batteries at once at the same speed. Gonna go ahead and get my USB-C to C cables out, plug them in here. Now, if you'd be doing deer recoveries or pet recoveries or something like this, you probably wouldn't wanna put all that stuff into your case every single time, moving from one location to the next, but you could. I would probably have it set up inside my truck with a battery generator. That way I don't have to do this when I get to my location. But I wanted to show you that it will easily fit into your carry case. So I got my three chargers out. Gonna go ahead and get my drone out and my RC controller. So there you go. All of that was in that small carry case for the M4T. Talking about the cameras that are on your gimbal. You have four cameras on the gimbal. You have a thermal. It is a 640 thermal camera, but they have a feature what they call UHR built into this. When I first got my hands on it, I thought it was an actual HD thermal camera because it was that clear. It is nuts how clear that this image is coming off of this thermal. Then you have a wide angle lens, a medium lens, and then your zoom lens. Think of these lenses just like on your iPhone. Almost all phones now have three lenses on the back of them. You have your wide, your medium, and your zoom. That is how this works. It has 110 times zoom, but it does start getting a little grainy once you go past, I'd say about 40X. But outside of that, it is very, very good image. The spotlight is very bright. 
I don't know the exact lumens of it, but I have been flying it a good bit. From 250 feet, you can still easily see a deer. I would say it really likes to be between that 200 and 250. Once you get into the 300 feet range above the ground, then it starts becoming a little harder to see what you're looking at. You can still get it done, but it does start lagging there. Since we're talking about heights, I got to tell you, the drone is very, very quiet. It comes with these standard propellers, but you can also get the quiet propellers that helps it bring the noise down even more. I have not had any issues with around deer or wildlife of any kind being spooked because they hear the drone. It is very, very quiet, much quieter than the 30T for sure. Now, get into the battery life of the drone. You might read the stats and it's going to tell you 40 to 45 minute flight time. That is in absolute ideal conditions. You're not going to get that realistically because that's going from 100% to zero. You don't want to go much lower than 15% when you're out flying. So all of my hours that I've now put on the M4T, I am realistically getting 30 minutes of flight time going from 100% to 15%. When I turn my chargers to 90%, then the battery will last from 90 to 15%, about 20 to 25 minutes of flight time, depending on the winds and conditions. But that has been very, very consistent for me on flight time with these batteries. Talking about charge time on your batteries, when you have it switched to 90% using a 100 watt charger and only using one outlet coming off of the 100 watt charger, it has two outlets on the 100 watt charger. But when you use two, if you have it split, then it doesn't have as much power going into the flight battery because it's splitting some of that power going into the charger. So that's why we don't do that. We only use one USB-C to C going into the battery hub and then it will charge your battery from 13% or 15% up to 90% in almost exactly 50 minutes. So each battery, if you have three batteries on there and you put them on at the same time, each battery will be full in 50 minutes. And I've done many tests and all of my batteries have been very consistent at that 50 minute mark. If you go to full, if you tell it to go to 100%, now you're looking closer to that one hour mark to get it to 100%. When I'm out on the field, I have it go to 90%. That way I'm getting a faster charge on those batteries. Let's talk the controller. The controller, it feels good in your hand. It's very ergonomic. There are a few things that have changed on the controllers. We only have two outlets up top. We have a USB-A and the HDMI on top. And on the bottom, it has your micro SD card as well as your USB-C charge port to charge the internal battery as well as the WB37 battery if you have it plugged in. So you can charge that battery through this charge port on the bottom or or you can take it out and you can set it in to the hub itself the WB37 hub. The controller, as far as the buttons, almost all are the same. I've noticed that the signal coming from the M4T to my controller is a lot more stable and it doesn't really get grainy. When signal starts to be lost between the RC controller and the drone, the image just shuts off. It's not really grainy, it's just done. But it's much better than the 30T has been. All right, guys, so I won't be able to go into every detail about the M4T, what I like about it but I am going to show you at least three things. One is how nice it is to be able to launch your drone by hand. The other is it has 360 view so it has anti-collision. If you're flying toward a building in the daytime it's going to sense it and won't hit the building. Now at nighttime that doesn't work and then it also has a built-in IR light. I will say it's really not that usable unless you're really close to something. Obviously, I was able to do it, but you can't really see much at 200 feet with that IR light. But I'm gonna show you how easily you can launch this thing by hand. This harness that I'm putting on does not come in the kit. You can easily add it to your kit. It makes it really nice to be able to hand launch your drone. This bracket will come with the harness to be able to hold your controller. So this is how that works. Gonna go ahead, turn on the drone. The reason this harness, you almost need it to hand launch it is because the controller is so big that you can't do it by hand. I mean, I can almost do it, but I'll show you how I can, with this harness, I'll go into the screen, hand launch this thing, really, really nice. 
The stability of this drone is just crazy. And then uh, obviously hand catching, grab it. Really, really nice. That's probably one of the most liked features about this drone is how stable it is and you can just literally grab it and launch it. I like it. I'm gonna show you the 360 on this. Basically, once you take off, those cameras engage. So any direction that you're moving, if I move this way, that camera will turn on. If I move that way, basically everything, you will be able to see it on your screen. I don't know how practical it is for night operations because you can't really see much in the nighttime, but that is another cool feature that it has. Guys, if you want to see a side-by-side -side comparison between the 4T and the 30T, I'll do that, but you got to leave a comment, give it a like, I'll bring you that video. That's basically it. The M4T package is really, really good. I believe, in my opinion, that this is the most compact powerhouse drone on the market because of how versatile it is. You can use this drone to do thermal inspections. You can do it for deer recovery, pet recovery. You can use this drone to make cool videos, like just flying around something and make really good videos. You can take really good photos with it. It is an all around cowboy. I don't know if you guys know anything about rodeos, but like Ty Murray, look, he was an all around cowboy. This thing is an all around cowboy. It just works for about everything that you want to do. So there you go. I'm so excited for this M4T coming to the market. I think that it will allow a lot more people to get into the thermal drone market. Honestly, this drone is priced to the point where it's like, I almost feel like everybody should have one. If you're a deer hunter, if you're a pet lover, if you're a farmer, if you're a rancher, this drone can help you in many ways. And not only for thermal inspections, but maybe to check on your cow herd or your horses, whatever it might be. This drone is compact enough and it's versatile enough. I think with the price that you can get this thing, you should have one yourself. All right, that's my little spiel on the absolute powerhouse of a drone. Make sure to like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and we'll see you guys in the field.